Honeybees are fascinating insect societies. Throughout evolution, they developed several ways to defend their nest from pathogens, thieves, and predators. Against microorganisms, honeybees rely on innate immunity and some social immunity behaviors as discussed in another video in this channel. Against bigger enemies like varroa mites and small hive beetles, they rely on social immunity behaviors like grooming, hygienic behavior, and the use of propolis to isolate intruders apart from the nest. However, when the opponent is much bigger and stronger, like a giant hornet, honeybees can become very creative. Normally, honeybees collect resources from plant sources nectar and pollen from flowers, and propolis from tree buds. However, this Ipserana honeybee is collecting something very different. Animal poop. Yes, you heard it right. Poop. One of the most dramatic interactions between honeybees and hornets involves honeybees and the famous Vespa mandarinia, the murder hornet, as it became known in the United States. The hornet can easily overtake colonies of the European honeybees, Apes mellifera, however, they cannot do the same with Apes serana, the Asian honeybee. It is known that in the presence of the hornet, Apes serana workers start vibratory signals to be prepared to hit ball scouting hornet, an impressive defensive behavior where honeybees attack the invader by engulfing them in a ball of honeybees, not only trapping them, but also killing them using heat and suffocation. In 2018, a group of researchers led by Dr. Heather Matla from Wesley College in Massachusetts investigated claims from local beekeepers in Vietnam about the use of unknown material being collected by bees and use it at the entrance of the hives when another giant hornet was present, Vespa soror, a close cousin of the Vespa mandarinia that also preys on honeybees in masses. After several experiments and a lot of hard work, the researchers conclude that the material was poop collected by bees intentionally used at the entrance of the hives to protect the colony against the hornet. This was the first description of honeybees collecting no plant material and the first description of honeybees using tools. The research got a lot of attention out there. It was featured on a YouTube channel SciShow, on CNN, Scientific American, and all of them described the results of this fantastic use of the scientific method. However, none of them described how the science was done. How do the scientists know the spots at the entrance of the hive were the results of honeybee activity? To answer this question, the researchers clean up 339 honeybee hives, and on top of that, they record those hives' activity for 10 days. Can you imagine yourself cleaning up poop from 339 hives to fulfill your research duties? By monitoring these colonies, the researchers could confirm that fresh material was indeed deposited at the entrance of the hives by bees, and it increases over time as you can see in this graphic right here. After five days, 25% of the hives have the poop spot back. And on day 10, some APRs have reached 80%. So now the researchers know that over time there is accumulation of spots and the bees are responsible for the spot. But how the heck the researchers know or figured it out the spots are poop? The researchers marked several workers and with the video recording from the bees in the field, researchers could observe several Ape Serana worker bees not only investigating animal feces but also carrying it back to their colonies and then applying it as a textured spot in front of the hives confirming that the mysterious material is in fact poop. Again, a lot of respect for the researchers here. Can you imagine yourself in front of a pile of poop for hours marking bees and then recording them and then going back and matching them with the painting that you did just to confirm that whatever they collected is the thing they put in front of the hive. A lot of work. Okay, now the researchers know the spots are made by bees, now the researchers know the spots are poop, but how do they know the spots, the presence of the spots 
is a reaction to the presence of the Vespa Soror, specifically or not any Vespa. Researchers hypothesized that poop spots at the entrance of the hives were reactions to the presence of Vespa Soror, the initial claim from local beekeepers. To prove it, they separate the two sets of hives in the same apiary. One set of hives exposed to the hornet and another set of hives where the researchers were waving them away. And then they recorded the number of poop spots at the entrance of each hive over time. And the results show a strong correlation. As you can see here, the number of spots increased over time only on the hives exposed to Vespa Soror. This is a strong result in favor of the hypothesis that the phenomenon is a defense mechanism against Vespa Soro. However, to make sure the behavior was not triggered by any other hornet, the researchers also performed the same experiment using Vespa Velutina, and in this experiment there was no correlation at all observed, meaning that Vespa Velutina do not trigger the same defense mechanism. So now the researchers know the spots are made by bees, the spots are poop, there is a correlation when you have Vespa Soror only that, so the, the, the behavior is triggered by the presence of the Vespa Soror. But now the question is, what triggers the behavior? Uh, is a visual effect or there is any smell or anything else that triggers the effect? To answer this question, the researchers dissect von der Vecht gland from Vespa Soror the putative source of pheromones that hornets use to mark target colons prior to a mass attack, and expose this extract to one set of Ipserona honeybee colonies and the control contains only ether, the extraction solvent, to another set of hives and documented the number of poop spots over time. As you can see here, the hives exposed to ether control has less than 5 poop spots in average at the beginning and at the end of the test. However, the hives exposed to the gland extract have more than 15 poop spots on average at the end of the test much more than the eater controls itself, showing that the gland extract is in fact a key factor to trigger the defense mechanism. So many experiments right now, very exciting, we learn a lot. But there is one question that is still remaining. Does the poop at the entrance of the hive get rid of the hornet? Does it work? To answer this question, the researchers measured the total visit duration of the hornets, how long the hornets stay after landing, how long the hornets stay landed at the entrance of the hive, and last but not least, how long the hornets chew the entrance of the hive. All of that in three different levels of poop spots, light, moderate, and heavy. The total duration of a hornet visit on a hive with a light load of poop was around 100 seconds, and this time was reduced almost by half on hives with moderate and heavy loads of poop. The hornets stay landed on hives with a light load of poop for around 80 seconds and this time was reduced to only 30 seconds on hives with moderate and heavy loads of poop. The hornet landed at the entrance of the hive with a light poop load for around 35 seconds, but this time was reduced almost 80% on hives with moderate and heavy loads of poop. And finally, likely the most exciting result, the hornets were able to chew the entrance of the hive with a light load of poop for around 25 seconds, and this time was dramatically reduced to almost zero on hives with moderate and heavy poop loads. This is definitely strong data showing how hard it is for the hornets to stay around in the presence of poop. Basically, the hornets can't stand chewing poop, which is kind of funny. I don't know about you, but I learned a lot so far and I got a lot of respect for the researchers. Can you imagine everything they have passed in Vietnam? So I'm very curious about not only the science, I have more questions about the science, but I also have questions about the travel, the adventure, the excitement of doing the research on location. Lucky us, I invite the authors of the paper for my next live stream. It's gonna be held on February 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern time and all of you are welcome to join us. It is free to everybody. I'll leave a link in the description of this video so you can register to know more about the event. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and also supporting us on Patreon. I also want to invite you to watch this next video right here. Thanks for watching Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.